What I'm worried about the most is that this pandemic has affected our small businesses drastically and left me and others wondering about our futures. How can we right now support each other in the community without passion? Small business owners may or may not have the finances or power to rehire the staff we temporarily laid off. Is that our government obeyed all the restaurants to close down for a known period of time, but doesn't subsidize the people who lost their jobs. And a lot of people will lose jobs and they'll be like a really bad situation in a few months. Up. So things fall apart, things break down only to build better. I think so. people might know how, the, how important the cooking is. And they'll start cooking at home and you never know after two or three months the my cooks better than us well this most certainly was not planned on being my first video but it seems like all over the world right now things are not going according to plan the food community is being hit in ways we never would have imagined in the face of this virus independent restaurants run on extremely tight margins and when faced with closing in many instances are left with no other option but to furlough their employees many of which earn only enough to make it paycheck to paycheck. Many are now finding themselves in seemingly impossible situations and asking for help. I've spent the last couple of days talking with chefs and industry professionals from around the world about the issues facing our community and how others can help. I've added some resources below that can help make a difference. And as time progresses, I encourage all to add links to the comment section below and I'll keep them as up to date as possible. While I know these times are tough, I also know how resilient and resourceful we are, and that we'll come through it stronger and closer than ever. Hey, Chef. Hey, Chef. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? At home? Yeah. <laughs> Hold up. So I'm calling to talk about the struggles that the food world's facing. When did you see this virus as something that was going to deeply impact independent restaurants and their teams? I don't know. Like realistically, no one thought it was going to be this this kind of drastic. You know, I feel like, you know, the the federal response early on, obviously, like didn't prepare people for 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 how how challenging um, it, it 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 has been. In New York City alone, we laid off two hundred fifty thousand people in the hospitality industry, basically overnight. Uh, and, and now the work really begins to make sure as many of those jobs are protected. You know, obviously it's so hard you know, to make these calls with, in the restaurant business because people live hand to mouth. Um, and, you know, me and Jeff, my business partner, kind of went back and forth. Like, what's the best play? You know, obviously like from early on, like I wanted to like, you know, kind of give people the safest workspace. Um, and probably I would have closed the restaurant sooner, but then no, no, the side of it's like, we wanted to pay our team and yeah. want to give them the, the, the best chance possible. Cause you know, when I was a young cook, I, w I would have been ill prepared for this, you know, like, um, you know, when I was a young cook, I had $0 in the bank and left to debt. Yeah, me too. And your, your first, th your thoughts are, <clears throat> what is this intersection of keeping my company alive? keeping the people that work for me secure and making sure, you know, that everyone has a job to come back to in a few weeks. Yeah, I just hope that eventually I can provide even half the jobs that I've recently cut out to my employees, people who have worked for me for 12, 15 years. I mean, uh, it's, it's like my family, you know, they all, all my team, so I don't want to close the restaurant, I don't want them to be on the, you know, leave without pay or whatever. It's fucking scary because, as you know, because I own it 100%, it's quite scary because you've got 20 souls that are on your bankroll. I, I won't be able to pay myself, which is scary because I have, you know, my wife and daughter at home. I think back to, like, when I was a line cook in San Francisco, living paycheck to paycheck, barely getting by, like, how many line cooks now are without work? How many dishwashers are without jobs? How many busters have nowhere to go and they don't know where their next paycheck is coming from? And like, we're all talking about it, but we need like serious solutions immediately. So what do some of those solutions look like? I just think it's, uh, the government needs to step up and just make more decisions that are gonna support the industry. Cause it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like they're supporting us very much. 
restaurants need Congress's help. I don't think that everybody realizes the scope of this, how many people actually work in the restaurant business, 16.1 million people across the United States, how big this industry is. Um, and so I think that there's a considerable amount of help that's going to be needed from our government, um, both to get money in the hands of all the people that work in restaurants, which I think is happening, um, but also writing a bill that, um, for lack of a better word, is a bit of a bailout for a lot of these restaurants that allows them to reopen, that gives them enough cash flow to reopen. We have requested government for support. Uh, we have requested government to waive off a lot of taxes. Uh, we have requested government for uh, excise tax, to waive off the excise tax as well. Uh, but there has been no solution as yet. <clears throat> we're only hoping and we're only hoping for best uh, that this situation really uh, calms down and we can go back to businesses. But if it really continues, then then you know we need to take maybe some tough calls, which which is quite unfortunate and and you know I, I hope that doesn't that time doesn't come. We've seen a lot of support for the airlines and for major restaurant and food groups, but the people that they're forgetting are the independently owned businesses, the the businesses that have 18, 20, 60 employees you know, all of which are now unemployed. And it's, it's millions of people who don't have any means of making any money right now and have families to take care of, children, you know, parents, yeah. grandparents. It's, it's not about the bigger, you know, groups anymore. It's about each person and... I would beg of them to to recognize that everyone who maybe they would look over in the past, whether it is the dishwasher or the person who's cleaning out the trash cans at the train station, all of these people are integral to their towns, their cities, their states, this nation as a whole, and that these people mustn't be overlooked by any means. Yeah. So as we wait for government to hear our voice and hopefully take action, what can we do in our communities to help others and small businesses in need? What we're doing with the, uh, the New York Hospitality Coalition uh, is trying to build a community, uh, a resource a service where operators and the workforce, uh, they can go, they can get factual information on what they can be doing. Uh, and uh, uh, the whole idea is to keep as many of these business, enable as many of these operators to reopen as possible, uh, as well as I take the best care possible of our workforce. Even the best in our, in our industry is, is, is trying to survive. That's what we're worried about, is all those corner stores, all those corner restaurants uh, that are, uh, you know, not on Eater, not on the Top 50, not on the Discovery. They're, they're, they're going to get overlooked. Yeah. Uh, so that's why this coalition uh, is, was formed. It, it's needed. Uh, got together with some of my chef friends and... Uh, Everybody jumped on board supporting it in the last you know, 12 hours. We, we just posted it yesterday. Um, all that being said, it's really simple. And I think other markets should look into this. Uh, our first goal was to get a hold of some media, like a radio station, uh, you know, through some friends. Uh, then from there, it was to grab onto some people that you know in the community that maybe have a voice that they can listen to. Um, and you just set up a GoFundMe page uh, use some people that you trust, maybe throw a lawyer into the mix to keep everything safe. And people just apply. They apply by putting their name, their information, and two paycheck stubs to show that they were just working in the restaurant industry. And we'll be able to take all the money and pile it up and distribute it and get cash to people that need it immediately. Noma's cooking staff meal out of the staff canteen uh, and make it or- take away. For the staff. For the staff. For, yeah. for, for all the chefs and uh, front of house staff that right. are just you know, sitting at home trying to hold on to their savings and not spend money. Um, so there is, you know, to Renee's credit, that he's spending whatever Noma has left to, to just support the staff and have a network in place. Since we're not that busy, can we do something else? So we, we start to provide meals to the front line, like in the hospitals. Yeah, so to work with, um, because 
right now those frontliners in the hospital they can't really go out for meals because of uh, of time restriction they have to work and also there's fear there's fear in the community if you wear um, a, a, a doctor suit or a, a nurse's uniform people can may may shun away from you so we try to bring out meals comfort food to them yeah to show it show support to show support that hey you guys are fronting the fight we we can't do much but we do what we can providing comfort food and that's our strength that's so great that's what we are trying to 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 do a communal part of it because that's what we can do only <laughs> we are no doctor or nurses but but uh, we are the frontliner in the food food industry so that's what we do and recently we also joined hands with um, some local restaurants to put up that movement so i think this is to create awareness awareness in the community that yes we are now in in such a a, a time is that people want to isolate but we, we still need to show some compassion to show support that certain people are doing much more for us so just put put in our chips to do whatever within our means not 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 say doing all way out but within our means yeah and also to keep everyone safe yeah, yeah that's what's going on right now yeah great one great things that one of the most uh um spoken about chef in the world is doing right now this is uh rasmus from alchemist he turned his kitchen into a uh, a kitchen where every chef uh, in Copenhagen who is basically not working right now is well welcome and that pretty big kitchen and they're keeping a pretty um, safe distance in between you know workers in the kitchen and they're cooking meals very simple meals for all the homeless of uh, Copenhagen That's and there great. are like 600 of them and uh, I'm sure that if the thing is going to continue to work it's called junk food uh, this movement, and um, but he, he didn't think twice about doing this. Makers really came to the table with Chef uh, Ed Lee, and uh, they're popping up food banks around the country. There's a bunch of them now. Uh, Eduardo's doing one in Seattle, and so now we're going to do one in Brooklyn, and we're just converting uh, the, the restaurant into a food bank. We're going to, you know, no one's coming inside. It's all going to be brought outside, so that way it's super safe. Uh, we're only going to have, you know, between five and eight employees, uh, you know, prepping the food. There's a ton of volunteers. Uh, some will be volunteers. Some will be employees that will be able to, to you know, bring back onto the payroll. Um, so it's great. I mean, we're going to do everything from, you know, toiletries to some dried lentils to some prepared food. Uh, just kind of whatever we can for as long as we can. That's great. So is that is that something that makers started? They came to you and said, "Let's do this partnership." It was so, Chef Ed Lee. Yeah, Ed Lee. Okay. Came to the conclusion. He has his foundation, and he came to the conclusion that, uh, you know, all these alcohol companies are not using their marketing budgets right now. Like, you know, marketing budgets are not being spent. So he said, "Well, why don't you market by doing these pop ups around Genius?" I think it's brilliant. Uh, so yeah. I saw Eduardo uh, posting, announcing that he was doing this, and I immediately called him. And and more than what six hours later, we we were we were opening a food bank. Yeah, yeah. Wow, beautiful. It's really incredible to see communities like ours coming together and take action for what's needed. Something I've always been struck by is how connected we are all over the world through food. It has become a global community right now, as far as all the restaurant and chefs, business owners of restaurants. I think it is. It has made us really a like a tight knit community, and I can only hope that we all come back stronger with this. For me, I'm feel really moved how caring our uh, our industry are among ourselves, and I hope there's enough people on the outside who will support us too. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people have the greatest moments of their lives in restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know. They they meet their in-laws for the first time. They, they propose to their wife. They spend time with friends. They have their last meal with a loved one. Um, all these things happen in these spaces. And, uh, you know, it's been taken away from a lot of us right now. And, you know, and for the people who work in it, who really love the craft of hospitality and taking care of people, you know, it's been 
that's been my whole entire life and right now it doesn't exist so um the amount of emotion that's going to come with being able to be in our spaces again and, and serve people again um it's, it's gonna it's gonna feel amazing just seeing society as a whole band together and 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 really like support you know i see us i i see uh, life through the trees um and maybe i'm naive but but i think you know like we need to be positive and we need to kind of like plan for for better days you yeah. know obviously hope for the best prepare for the worst and and, and you know society's going to change you know we're we're going to you know, hopefully for the better i just can't imagine um things not changing for the better and maybe people recognizing that this is a very important industry and it literally feeds half of our meals if not more um in, the, in this country and it's just like it's humbling i think all the way around i think it's going to be hum- we're going to be humbled as an industry all together you know because there's not going to be i think much room for um like who is the best who is this who is that it's going to be more like trying to rebuild something that we've been working on for so long and just kind of together as a community globally mm-hmm. not only you know like in your city so I think that humbling experience is going to make the industry better. It's going to make us think more honestly of what we are, you know, doing as chefs, as, you know, anyone in the hospitality period. What I'm sad about is all of this talented people in our industry. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. And uh, I saw this, uh, this great post of, um, you know, when the Titanic was sinking, the band was still playing and, you know, we in the F&B, are still the band we still playing correct yeah um so i just hope that people keep on supporting um your local chefs vendors and everything else with everything is so much um relying on them you know from a dishwasher to to a server to anybody else you know we have got very small margins we are in the hospitality industry we care about what we do and we care about people um internally and externally and i just hope that people are still support us however they can everybody everywhere that works in it it doesn't matter if it's a server bartender a farmer a line cook a publicist a food journalist a food photographer the ecosystem that exists in the restaurant business right now all these people are feeling it together um we should be one team one community um one love and there's a old um African saying, um, the sound that in time and with water, everything changes. So we are, we change, we ch- humans keep changing, no matter, no matter what happened to us, we'll always change. And uh, I think these changes uh, at the end will uh, make us better human beings. Beautifully said. Well, I'm going to let you talk, Chef, and hopefully I'll be able to translate. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Buongiorno a tutti, io sono Davide Oldani e sto scambiando due chiacchiere da, da, da Milano, da Cornaretto, dal paese dove vivo. È una situazione surreale, una situazione che non ho mai vissuto sulla mia pelle e neanche parlando con i miei genitori ehm, che hanno e me fatto la guerra prima, appunto mi raccontano che questa è veramente una cosa molto strana, molto, ripeto, surreale, per cui... Eh, Abbiamo preso dei provvedimenti, io come ristoratore cuoco ho preso dei provvedimenti subito appena ho sentito la notizia, provvedimenti per me è significato, eh, il significato era di chiudere il ristorante, di prendere cura dei miei ragazzi, dei miei cuochi, dei, del mio staff, del, dei miei fornitori e poi dei miei clienti, per cui il criterio mio di rispetto verso gli altri è stato quello di chiudere e di poter cominciare a, in questo in questo periodo molto particolare a riflettere per come ripartire dopo. Io parlo da imprenditore per cui so cosa vuol dire eh, eh, chiudere un'attività che funziona molto bene, so cosa vuol dire prendere del tempo per riflettere e credo che queste riflessioni che faremo in questo periodo così, eh, tra virgolette, eh, rinchiusi in casa ci porterà ad essere più uomini, ad essere più rispettosi, spero, nel confronto degli altri e del prossimo. Per cui eh, 
prendiamo, guardiamo il lato positivo di tutto questo e facciamone tutti quanti tesoro. Grazie, ciao. Have you recorded that? Yeah. Oh, right. Fucking hell, I thought we were just having a chat. Well... <laughs> <laughs>